The Egon Water Hub is very similar to the DC Hub in that it's a device that collects everything together and all the difficult work is done for you. But in this case, it's plumbing. The Water Hub, principally speaking, takes all of the water from grey tank, hot water tank, cold water tank, and you plumb it to one place. And that one place is the water hub. And what that place does, it distributes it. Hot water with a temperature control valve. So it's not just hot water, it's perfectly temperature controlled water. Instantly. Grey water in into a tank. Fill up your tank. Now your tank now goes via the water hub and goes to your kitchen, goes to your hot water supply. All of the difficult stuff is done for you. Now I'm going to ask Heiner to explain to you how easy this is to... Honestly, again, it's like paint by numbers. This is how I've installed the water hub in my vehicle, inside a gull wing, which makes it really usable on a wagon. And then the outlets are here. This is the tap outlet. This is the shower outlet. I've got the switches accessible on this side. I can put the external pickup right here. Tank is plumbed in, hot water system is plumbed in on the inside. I can just take my shower hose out of here, plug it into the shower hose connection, turn on the blue light for the tank water, and have a shower. That's how long it takes. And when you're done, turn it off, release the pressure, get the water out of the pipe, the hose, put it back in here, drive away. Couldn't be easier to have a shower around the car. This is an instructional video where we show you how to install and how to use the Egan Water Hub. You can buy the unit by itself, which comes in this box. There's also an additional shower and hose kit and an electric kit for connecting the pumps. And I will show you how to use and install these two. This product will allow you to have a water distribution system in your vehicle. One circuit comes from your drink water tank, which is quite precious when you're out and about because you can only take so much drink water with you and you can shower from that water and you can drink that water. You've also got a temperature regulator so you can connect an external hot water source that will be fed and then return to the water hub through the water heater itself. And the mixer is gonna regulate that temperature automatically to whatever you set it to. So you don't waste water adjusting the temperature of your water. You will receive your water hub in this box. Inside you will find a manual that explains all the details about the water hub it gives you an example on how to plumb up the water hub. It's also got links in there to our website where you can find all materials as well. And it will also tell you a little bit about the accessories. This is your Egan water distribution system. You will see you've got different connections on the outside of your water hub. These are all standard hose fitting connections that you can buy anywhere in the world. On the back side, you have got a tank input, an external water input, a hot water out and a hot water in circuit. I'll explain a little bit more later on what that does. And here you've got a tap outlet and a shower outlet. The tap outlet is for drinking water. The shower outlet is for drinking or gray water and it has got hot water coming out while the tap water outlet has only got cold water coming out of it. I will open the housing now and show you a bit more how everything works and explain the inside. So you got two screws on the top and two screws on the bottom of this unit. Once these screws are removed, you can then take off the cover of the water hub. The cool thing is, depending on which way around you want to mount this, you can flip this around so the writing is always in the right orientation. To mount the water hub, you've got different options. There's a mounting hole there, 
another mounting hole here, a mounting hole there, mounting hole here, and another mounting hole right there. You, have, you can push the hoses out of the way to get to the mounting holes. For these mounting holes here at the bottom, you can just unclip the connector from the pump, move the hoses out of the way, mount the water hub, put the connection back on and put the little clip back into place. To explain the inner workings of the water hub, you've got two pump systems, which is important because we separate in between fresh drinking water, which are all the blue lines, and in between dirty black slash gray water, which is just for showering. It's also important to know that the hot water unit can be fed with clean water and also with gray water. So the hot water shower outlet is deemed not drinkable. The reason for that is we've got a tank water input which runs through this bottom pump here and feeds the tap outlet directly. But it also feeds this mixer, this four-way mixer where we get cold water to the mixing valve cold water to the hot water unit and then we got hot water flowing back into the mixing unit and in here is a check valve that prevents back feed to the drink water outlet so this is quite a simple but very effective system so that you can only use your drink water for drinking but you can use an external water supply from a bucket or a canister with any water that you find on a track, on a lake, on a river, anywhere and use it to wash your dishes or to shower with it. As soon as it's good enough to shower, you can suck it in through this pump and you can have a hot shower and you have a long shower, but you do preserve your drink water source. Another cool feature is the automatic temperature mixing valve. So what you do here is you set the temperature to where it's comfortable for you and you usually have about 70 degree hot water in your hot water system. We generally recommend 12 or 24 or 240 volt electric hot water systems. Those usually stop at 60 or 70 degrees. So it means you get 70 degree hot water to the mixer while you're getting cold water to the mixer here. And then you get perfectly tempered water out here and you don't have to adjust anything on it, especially because cold water gets pumped into your hot water system, means the water that now comes out of your hot water system will drop in temperature. So while you're showering, you generally you would need to readjust the temperature all the time. But since this is an automatic mixing valve, it will now take more hot with less cold and it will keep the temperature constant. So it's minimum wastage for your water supply. Another thing you need to connect is the power supply for the pumps. There's two ways of doing that. If you install the water hub somewhere where it's not that easy to access and you'd rather have your switches somewhere else in the vehicle, all you need to do is connect power supplies that run through a switch to the pumps. The bottom one is the fresh water pump. The top one is the gray water pump and you can have this switched anywhere in the vehicle. These draw about four amps. So if you fuse the water hub with a 10 amp fuse, that's more than enough. You can even run both pumps at the same time through that fuse. But if you do want to have switches on the water hub itself, you see there's two holes here and you can buy this accessory, which is the wiring kit for the water hub. It comes coiled up. So you just cut the cable ties and then you can install the switches into the water hub. You can see there's different plugs on there and the pumps have got male and female plugs on them as well. So this only goes together one way. The reason for that is that one of the switches has got a green background illumination and the other switch has got a blue background illumination. The blue switch is for the fresh water and the green switch is for the dirty water very easy to remember that way because dirty water is green clean water is blue that's the logic behind that so when you install these switches you will have to take them out 
of the plug. What you can find is on the switch itself, there's a little letter at the end saying B. That means this is the blue switch. You do not want to mix them up because otherwise you have to swap them over later on. So I highly recommend that you label these as soon as you can. You just put a little tiny B and a G on here or just put a dot and no dot so that you know which one goes where. So I'm going to put a dot here and I'm going to put a dot here so I know which plugs belong together. So all you have to do now is slide the switch in here and then screw the nut onto it. After you've installed the switches, just tighten them up slightly with a spanner and now have a look at the one that you marked. There's a mark here, there's a mark there. The plugs will only go back on in one way. So this little pin here goes where the little pin is on the side of the plug. Plug them in, they can't rattle off. You actually have to press that little pin down. Locate this little pin on the side here. That has to go right in there. Be gentle when you do it because you can bend these pins. But once you've got them lined up, they just clip in. You can move the pipe work around a little bit. It does not matter at all. And now these will only go together one way. They take a bit of firm pushing to go together. That makes for good connection. And now all you need to do is to run this to a fuse, to your lithium battery, to your DC hub, and everything's done. You can switch on your water hub and water will start to pump out. That's all you need to do to connect the pumps on your water hub. Or like I said, alternatively, just use switches somewhere else in the car. You could even hook up switches on the water hub itself and you can just splice into the cable and have another switch somewhere in your vehicle. So the next thing that you need to do now is to connect the plumbing to it. The easiest way to do that is to also buy the Egan shower and hose kit. In it, you will get all the hoses that you need to connect your tap, your external pickup and your shower head. And you also get the quick connectors with it.